Until the 19th century, the purpose of the brain's lateralization was a mystery. Lateralization is the tendency of certain cognitive functions and processes to be specialized to one side of the brain. Paul Broca, a physician, anatomist, and anthropologist made some of the most significant contributions to our understanding of lateralization in the 1860s. Broca studied patients who had lost the ability to speak after suffering damage to the left side of their brains. Through these studies, he identified a specific area in the left hemisphere that was crucial for speech production known as Broca's area. This discovery provided strong evidence for the lateralization of the brain and not just visually, meaning you can actually see there's a left and a right side. Instead, this suggests that language processing is primarily localized on the left hemisphere for most people. Since then, many more cognitive functions have shown lateralization, such as hearing, vision, touch, and motor control, all being located on the opposite brain hemisphere as the side of the body with the initial input. In the 1960s, the neuropsychologist and neuroscientist Roger W. Sperry performed pioneering work in the area of split-brain neuroscience, where patients with epilepsy had their corpus callosum cut. The corpus callosum is a thick band of white matter that connects the two cerebral hemispheres, and during a global seizure, can act as an avenue for the abnormal electrical signals to travel to the opposite side. With the corpus callosum cut, the seizure can't propagate to the opposite side, either making the seizure non-existent or much smaller than it would have been. This also meant that the two hemispheres couldn't speak to one another during normal cognitive functioning. Sperry conducted multiple experiments on cats, showing that memories such as identifying a shape learned with one eye wasn't remembered when that same eye was covered and the shape was shown to the other eye. Sperry observed that each hemisphere is indeed a conscious system in its own right, perceiving, thinking, remembering, reasoning, willing, and emoting all at a characteristically human level. And both the left and the right hemisphere may be conscious simultaneously indifferent, even in mutually conflicting mental experiences that run along in parallel. Sperry continued investigating brain lateralization, experimenting with vision, language, and motor skills, showing that one side of the brain predominantly processes certain kinds of information, but the other side can indeed account for some processing under the right conditions. In 1973, an article in the New York Times popularized Sperry's work by claiming that people were either left or right brain, suggesting they were either more analytical or creative. This simplistic view has taken its hold on the masses and struggled to loosen its grip over the years. Chances are good that you've heard this is true. And to be honest, there is truth to it, but it really is an oversimplification. And to give you an idea as to why it's a simplification, I want you to ask yourself, what is creativity? What makes something creative and what makes it uncreative? This may or may not surprise you, but there is no universally agreed upon definition for creativity. What's considered creative in one domain might be uncreative in another. Let me ask you this, can mathematics be creative? How about engineering, which is an expression of mathematics? Does an artist need to logically think about the placement of the paint on the available space on the canvas? Obviously there's nuance here, because if there wasn't, then we'd have a solid definition for creativity. But in fact, a newly published theory as of 2023, known as the novelty routinization theory, expands upon a whole lot of recent neuroscientific discoveries. And it suggests that the left and the right brain process information such as familiar and new tasks, respectively. For example, under this theory, right brain people enjoy new and novel experiences, prefer to do and then learn, to create, discover, and see how widespread something can be, and then take action from there. Left brain people, on the other hand, enjoy familiar experiences, prefer to learn and then do, to improve upon, review, and then see how deep something can be, and then sit back and analyze the results. For me, I've always thought that for something to be considered creative, it needs to be novel or new, as well as useful. How you go about doing that is completely up to you, and also, what makes it highly or mildly creative. Creativity isn't just about spatial reasoning or the ability to visualize and manipulate three-dimensional shapes in your mind. 
Sometimes the ability to innovate requires deep reflection and analysis on something that already exists. If something is improved upon in a new and exciting way that is also useful, it may not have been built from the ground up, but it's still creative to an extent. We are whole-brained creatures, and as convenient as it may be to simplify cognitive processes to one side or the other at times, it's also important to understand that creativity requires more than just abstraction. Still, the brain is lateralized in many respects. It's possible for someone to be more analytical or spatially aware than another person, but that's also largely task-dependent. For example, males are typically seen as more analytical than females. However, males have also demonstrated a more precise ability to judge distances, which is definitely a spatial task or a right-brained task. As with most things, this left and right-brained paradigm is useful, up until a point. But then it starts to break down the more granular and nuanced you look at it. Now, hope this is going to sound like a bit of a leap here, but hopefully you'll stick with me. I wholeheartedly believe that artificial intelligence and all the advancements that are being made right now as of early 2024 are going to actually act as like a supercharged corpus callosum of sorts. Where some people tend to be more analytical or spatially based, artificial intelligence is going to be able to bridge that gap for individual reasoning, leading to some pretty amazing types or expressions of creativity. I for one am super excited to see what people are going to be able to do using artificial intelligence as a collaborator. I can only imagine what the future is going to be like even just in a few short years. But as it pertains strictly to the left and right brain being perfectly segmented for certain types of cognitive processes, the answer is Yes, that is how it is, and no, that's not how it is, and sometimes it's that way, and other times it's not, and... But, hey, that's neuroscience.